seven million years ago. Our primate ancestors lived safely in the trees. But their neighborhood is about to be invaded. This newcomer will have as profound an effect on human history as any other living thing on Earth. It seems almost impossible to believe, but one of the most important things that will lead to the emergence of us is the emergence of grass. The grasslands appear almost simultaneously around the world. We get the African savannas. We get the Eurasian steppe lands. We get the North American prairies. We get the great grasslands of Argentina appearing simultaneously around the world. In Eastern Africa, grasslands invade the traditional woodland habitat of our ape ancestors. With fewer trees and greater gaps between them, our ancestors have to adapt. Apes would notice that there's more and more apes in the same tree and less and less food. Increasing incentives for apes to go from one patch of food to a different one separated by grasslands. Now, one way to do it is to run like hell. <laughs> the other way to do it is to extend one's food sources into the grasslands and seek out the foods that are available there. And so, some apes make the move down into this stark new habitat. It's a landscape better suited to primates that can walk on two legs keeping their heads up above the tall grasses to watch for predators. Standing on two feet is a revolutionary advance because it frees up our hands. Hands we will need to shape human history. Two point six million years ago. Early protohumans or hominids walk an earth whose rocks are loaded with the element silicon. Created in the cores of stars billions of years before. Silicon is the second most abundant element in Earth's crust. One of its chemical quirks is the ability to bond with oxygen to form crystals that combine into solid rocks. Rocks that can be chipped and shaped without shattering. Hominids started doing this 2.6 million years ago, breaking cryptocrystalline silicates to make sharp edges. And the people use them for millions, literally 2.6 million years. Simply having a modified stone with a sharp edge on it, now suddenly you have a hammer. You have a crude cutting edge. A simple modified stone means a human can suddenly do a thousand more things than we could do previously. That little extra bit of technology enabled our ancestors to persist and eventually turn into us. Silicon launches the first technological revolution, the Stone Age. Millions of years after it powers our first handheld devices, another chemical quirk of silicon will make it the height of technology once again. The next leap towards becoming truly human relies on a little known secret of our home planet. In the known universe, it turns out Earth may have a rare and special power. Of all the planets and moons in the solar system, we think that Earth is unique in the ability to sustain fire. Other planets and moons have lightning and lava. But only on Earth do we have the two critical things we need for fire to burn. A vast fuel supply in the form of plants and trees, and an atmosphere full of oxygen to fan the flames. If 
fire wasn't the possibility, you'd have nothing like, like us running around. Homo sapiens, they made a world with fire. Our ancestors have fire firmly under control by 800,000 years ago. It's a skill that connects us back to the very beginning. Remember that all energy was created in the Big Bang, and all life is in a competition for our share of this energy. Using fire to cook is like having an external stomach to break down foods, releasing more calories, giving us more energy, which in turn allows us to support bigger brains. Fire is also the ultimate gateway technology. We will soon use it to turn clay into pottery, metal into weapons, water into steam power. If you don't have fire, you can't have an internal combustion engine. No fire, no metal. No fire, no rubber. It's a technology that opens a world of possibilities for creatures that know how to use it. Two hundred thousand years ago, the modern human has fully taken shape. The larynx, or voice box, which is high up in the throat in our ancestors, descends. More complex sounds are now possible. We begin to speak. For the first time, information can be shared between individuals and across generations. Humans have gained a critical advantage over every other creature on Earth. You can tell my grandfather said that when the elephants didn't show up, we go off and hunted zebras. You know, my aunt told me that her cousin found this water hole on the other side of that river. And we can all benefit and we can all understand what they mean when they're describing what they found out on that landscape. Language changes humans from being like standalone computers to being networked computers where you can share information. You know, one doesn't need to depend on one's own personal experience. One can borrow the personal experience of anyone with whom one can communicate. That's a powerful advantage. No other creature has that. As a species, humans become exponentially smarter. The global game board has been set, and we are now ready to play. 100,000 years ago, man can move. We have agile hands and primitive tools. We can communicate and control fire. We are finally ready to expand out of our African home. On a path millions of years in the making. Shifting continents have linked Africa and Eurasia into the largest contiguous landmass on Earth. Afro-Eurasia. 33 million square miles. More than twice the surface area of our entire moon. For early humans, this means more than half the land on Earth can be reached on foot. Human dispersal was a crucial game changer. We are one of the few primates that, that live on more than one continent simultaneously. So what that means is that we're better insulated from the kinds of things that cause big mammals to become extinct than other primates are. It's extinction insurance. Dispersal is extinction insurance. But just as the world begins to open itself up to man, the planet turns on us. An ice age begins. Now the planet will test us like never before. By 50,000 years ago, glaciers begin to advance down from the North Pole. At the same time, humans continue their conquest of the globe, arriving in China and Australia. By 30,000 years ago, Homo sapiens reach Europe for the first time. By 20,000 years ago, with the ice nearing its most extreme, 
the march of man reaches the frigid tundra of northeast Siberia. Despite the trials of the Ice Age, man endures and develops the last skills we will need to be truly human. The clues lie in these symbols. We have taken an intellectual leap to think beyond the here and now, beyond what is simply needed to survive. We can only start saying we have an organism that is human, that is the same as us, when we start seeing evidence of symbolic thought. It's when we start seeing a picture of a cow that everybody will recognize as the picture of a cow. Because only when we start seeing all of those things can we say that is a human. People or creatures that think like us, that see the world in the same way as us. And from that moment on, human history was marked to be radically different to any other species on this planet. Now, with huge amounts of the planet's water locked up in ice, sea levels plummet by three to four hundred feet. The last great barrier to the spread of man is erased. We come across the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia to North America. It's 10,000 BC, less than 100,000 years after expanding out of Africa, man has reached South America. Humans have met the adversity of the Ice Age head on, and rather than die off, we have adapted, become even more intelligent. And now we have colonized the entire globe. From coast to mountaintop, from tundra to desert. Humans are there. Our closest living ancestors, chimpanzees, live in the tropics. They only live in the tropics. Humans have managed to colonize the entire globe. Ice Age land bridges allowed man to spread around the world. But now the ice begins to melt and sea levels rise again. Humans are trapped and separated in two vast and unconnected hemispheres. Each pocket of humanity left to make the best of what it has been given. As the glaciers recede, they carve out lakes, rivers and bays. The map as we know it emerges. In Africa, increased rainfall causes Lake Victoria and Lake Albert to overflow and form Egypt's Nile River. In Eurasia, other rivers emerge. The Tigris and Euphrates in Mesopotamia, modern-day Iraq, the Indus in modern-day Pakistan, and China's Yellow and Yangtze. These river valleys become critically important for how human history will now be played out following the retreat of these ice sheets. These are the river valleys whose waters and fertile soils will allow the first seeds of civilization to be planted. With temperatures warming after the Ice Age, plants and animals are more plentiful and man can finally choose to stop moving. Permanent settlements begin. Populations grow. With more mouths to feed, our ancestors have to get clever. They had to find a way to increase the amount of food they could get from the surroundings. Now, one discovery forever changes the planet and the path of mankind. We learn to plant seeds. And the seeds we sow come from the same plants that millions of years earlier spurred our evolution from ape to man. The unheralded hero of human history, grass. A grass seed is tiny, right? It's no food. I can hunt a bison or I can take grass. I'm gonna hunt a bison, right? 
Ironically, grass seeds become the most important food crops in the world, but they're the things that are ignored by hunter-gatherers for thousands and thousands of years. People don't start using them until they absolutely have to use them. Some of the species of grass that we are most familiar with includes sugarcane. It includes wheat and rye and barley. All of the cereal crops are types of grass. So it's not just that beautiful green lawn that we measure our middle class success from. It's also the staple crop upon which civilization depends. It is the majority of our calorie intake. Once again, it all goes back to the Big Bang. Central to the story of all life is our competition for that energy created at the beginning of time. Just as oxygen gave us an edge, just as fire allowed us to consume more calories. Switching to farming is an energy revolution. A hunter-gatherer needs 10 square miles of territory to provide himself with enough sustenance, enough energy in the form of plants and meat to survive. A farmer can harvest the sun's energy so efficiently, he can fulfill his needs using only a tenth of a square mile of land. In the warming after the last ice age, farming begins to take hold in a half dozen places around the globe. But by the fortunes of geography, no place in the ancient world has a better concentration of plants and animals that can be domesticated than the Middle East's fertile crescent. In the Middle East, we have this remarkable convergence of species that seem to have been susceptible to domestication, both plants and animals. In terms of animals, we're talking about cattle, pigs, sheep, and goats. In terms of plants, two varieties of wheat, rye, barley, lentils, figs, all in this very small part of the world. Unlike the Fertile Crescent and the rest of Afro-Eurasia, places like Sub-Saharan Africa and the Americas have very few wild species that can be easily domesticated. It's a critical difference people blessed with the right mix of plants and animals will become more powerful and get a massive head start on the road to the modern world.